In today's video, we're going to explore a recent study from Stanford University that might just surprise you. We're diving into the world of ketamine, a drug that is often celebrated for its quick antidepressant effect. However, this study presents a twist suggesting that ketamine doesn't really work any better than a placebo in treating depression. Now, in case you've never heard of ketamine or you're unsure of what a placebo is, let me break it down for you. Ketamine is a potent drug often used in medical and veterinary settings for its anesthetic properties. It can ease pain and create kind of a sense of disconnect from reality, a kind of out-of-body state often referred to as dissociation. This makes it a particularly useful drug during surgery. Ketamine has a psychoactive side to it too. It can alter perceptions, possibly causing hallucinations or a dream-like state, and it generally just makes people feel pretty good. Now, here's a fun fact. Chemically, ketamine is very similar to PCP, which is also known as angel dust. Both substances interact with a specific type of receptor in the brain, which is responsible for their mind-altering effect. Now, while ketamine is used under medical conditions, angel dust, on the other hand, has a different story. Known as an illegal recreational drug, it's often used specifically for these mind-altering altering effects. Despite their chemical similarities, ketamine and PCP have very different uses and legal statuses. Now, let's switch gears and talk about a placebo. A placebo is a mock treatment that doesn't have any therapeutic effect. In clinical trials, something as simple as a sugar pill or a watered-down salt solution can be used as a placebo. The placebo serves as a control or baseline for comparison, allowing researchers to understand what what happens when no active medication is given and then compare the effects of the real medication to the placebo. The reality is if we expect something to happen, it often does psychologically. And so the placebo helps rule out the possibility that that effect was caused by our own psychological expectation rather than the active drug itself. In the Stanford study, researchers compared the effects of intravenous ketamine, which means it was just administered directly into the vein, to an active placebo. The surprise when they did this comparison, that rapid antidepressant effect of ketamine that everyone seems to be talking about was nowhere to be found. Simply put, the researchers write a single dose of intravenous ketamine compared to placebo has no short term effect on the severity of depression symptoms in adults with major depressive disorder. It's worth noting that one participant in the ketamine group did unfortunately die of a heart attack, although this tragic incident was considered unrelated to the ketamine infusion. The research was done at Stanford University. They pulled together a group of 40 participants, the majority of whom were females. All these participants had been grappling with a major depressive episode for at least a month. They got their participants from people preparing for surgery. This was a convenient move because it allowed them to administer the active placebo, which was surgical anesthesia, a substance similar to ketamine in terms of its side effects, but without the same mind altering effects that ketamine has. And just in case you're wondering, the medications potentially used as the active placebo for surgical anesthesia were propofol, sevoflurane, and isoflurane. They all potentially have mind-altering effects, but they don't cause the dissociation like ketamine does. They don't cause that out-of-body experience. The study was also triple-blinded, meaning that nobody, not the patients, not the doctors, not even the researchers, knew whether a patient was given ketamine or not until the study was over. Once they were done with the study, they tracked the participants for a few days afterwards and at a few other endpoints down the line five seven and 14 days later they wanted to know how the participants were doing and check on things like their mood how well they were responding to the treatment if their depression was improving if they were in pain and whether they used any sort of strong painkillers but here's the big kicker when it came to looking at changes and how severe their depression was there wasn't really a big difference between the ketamine group and the placebo group. No matter how they looked at the results, those who got the ketamine didn't get any better than those who just got the placebo. A week after the treatment, more than half of the patients who had the placebo felt a lot better compared with less than a third of those who received the ketamine treatment. And this trend kept up even after 14 days, the placebo group was still doing better. About 47% of patients felt better compared with about 42% of patients who received 
ketamine. Researchers also didn't really notice any important differences between the groups in terms of how much pain medicine was used and how intense the pain felt and scores on surveys about how anxious or depressed the patient felt. So what's the takeaway here? Well, researchers think that what we're really seeing with ketamine might just be a whole placebo effect. Future research, they argue, should use active placebos to really determine if the drug is really doing something, especially for substances like ketamine that have a noticeable side effect. The researchers point out that a lot of studies showing ketamine's beneficial effect on depression lacks the active placebo, and so it's easy for participants to know that they're receiving ketamine because they start to dissociate, and then they have this expectation that they're going to get better, and so guess what? Their depression actually improves. That being said, it's important to remember that every person's experience with depression is unique, and as a nurse working at a state hospital, I saw firsthand the complexities of treating mental health health disorders. We had one patient who was grappling with psychosis and severe depression. He was so sad and hopeless that he tried to hang himself. He was on a cocktail of different medications like antidepressants, antipsychotics, but nothing really seemed to help. So as a last ditch effort, the doctors tried using S-ketamine, but not like a pill or a shot. They just sprayed it up his nose. And guess what? The change in him was pretty noticeable. For the first time, we saw him smile. Now, I'm not saying that his like depression com was completely cured or anything like that, but his face wasn't blank anymore. It started to show feelings, even though you could tell he was still sad. Despite this story, some previous research has raised concerns about ketamine use for depression treatment, suggesting it poses a significant risk to the public. Issues include lack of evidence for its effectiveness and various safety concerns. Interestingly, ketamine doesn't have FDA approval for treating depression and is used off-label, but a variant of ketamine called S-ketamine was approved by the FDA in 2019. It goes by the brand name Spravato, and it also failed to outperform the placebo in five out of its six clinical trials. Ketamine has also been linked to suicide deaths in some studies further highlighting the potential risks associated with its use. So researchers are still trying to figure out the best way to effectively treat depression. They thought ketamine might be the answer, but maybe they were a little bit too hopeful. Based on this study, it seems that ketamine might not work any better than placebo. This really just shows us how important it is to do strong scientific research when trying to understand and treat complicated problems like depression. And I should also point out that the Stanford study is yet to be peer reviewed and the study has a very limited and specific sample size. There were only 40 participants. Most of them were women and all of them were preparing for some type of surgery. So this is definitely a small sample size that is not representative of other people who are diagnosed with major depressive disorder. Anyhow, I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you on our next episode.